Dear students, in this module, I am going to continue elaborating on alpha helices for you. The X-ray crystallography of proteins shows that the hydrogen atoms of N term come together with the oxygen atom of the C term at every fourth position from the N term and they make a hydrogen bond. As a result of this hydrogen bonding, alpha helices are formed. Let me explain how this bonding actually takes place. In this diagram, you can see the C term in blue and the N terms in red. Now, if you look carefully, there is a hydrogen bond that is there between the oxygen atom of this C term and the hydrogen atom of this N term. The distance between these two is exactly four residues. So let's count. One N term, two N term, three and four. So therefore, the C term binds with the N terms hydrogen that is at the fourth position immediately following that C term. Okay, so let me elaborate this again. For a hydrogen bond to exist between oxygen and hydrogen of C and N terminus, then the distance between them should be 4 N termini. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is going to lead to the formation of a structure like this as shown here. This is an alpha helix if you look at it from the top. Again, to summarize, so every oxygen bound to the fourth neighboring amino group's hydrogen leads to the formation of such alpha helices. This interaction is shown here using a figure from your textbook. So you can see the carbons are black here and the nitrogens are blue and there is a hydrogen bond between the hydrogen and oxygen of these two and this is repeated as shown here by these red dotted lines and hence the alpha helix forms now which amino acids prefer to form an alpha helix do all the amino acids prefer to form an alpha helix or do some of them prefer to form an alpha helix only? It is important because if all the amino acids were to have an equal propensity for making an alpha helix, then there will be no structural diversity in the protein structures. So as you see in this table, I have listed down amino acids which prefer to make an alpha helix. These include alanine, leucine, methionine, and so on and so forth. The numbers shown here in this table, they tell you about the preference of these amino acids to participate in the formation of the alpha helix. So clearly, they are very high as compared to the formation of a strand or a turn. We are going to study strands and turns later. So by looking at these values, which are greater than the values shown here, you can assume that these amino acids prefer to form helices. So from the 20 different amino acids that are there, only a few have a propensity to form a helix. And more so, we need to understand that there is different propensity even within these amino acids that prefer to form a helix. And therefore, once we are evaluating a sequence to form a helix, we need to study which amino acids are there in the sequence and are able to form a helix. Importantly, there is a general characteristics of these amino acids. Most of them are, in fact, hydrophobic. And therefore, we generalize by saying that the hydrophobic amino acids, they are more happy in making an alpha helix.
So in conclusion, the alpha helices are formed by a hydrogen bond that may be formed between the carbon and the um, nitrogen terminals within the backbone of a protein and the distance between them should be exactly four termini and therefore you will have a hydrogen bond leading to an alpha helix. At this point, you may wonder what other types of secondary structures are there and which amino acids prefer to make those structures.